I had the luck, I had the good fortune in college of meeting a shliach, the shliach in Burlington, Vermont. His name was Shmuel Hecht. Shmuel Hecht, um, I would imagine, your cousin? <laughs> Shmuley Heft was like from the uh, Chicago Hefts, I believe. Uh, the uncle was JJ and Oliver Shalom. Shmuley was brought to Vermont when I was a uh, freshman, my first year in the University of Vermont. He was there for four years, the years that I was there in university. And then at the age of 33, he passed away, leaving a wife, a widow, and two babies. That was Shmuley's story. He came to the University of Vermont. He made three, four, five, whatever it was, football chuvas. And then God took us all. That's what the true story. First of Vermont, I meet the shliach, or the shliach meets me. Somehow we got connected. This was a match. I could ha I have to tell you, um, it was a match <coughs> which I didn't really figure it out at the time. Like, what does this guy want from me? Like, I'm in the gym all day, training, and like the rabbi, Rabbi Hecht was a scholar. He had very thick glasses, shortish fellow. He wasn't into physical education at all. He was <laughs> Lubavitcher from Crown Heights, and he became a very, very scholarly man from a young age because of that, because of that. Shmuley was the guy that at one time, he was in public school because they had um, sight classes or something for the sight related. And Shmuley in Yechidus once said to the Rebbe that he's really sorry because he wants to be in the yeshiva. And the Rebbe made a phone call to his secretary or whatever and said to him, from now on you will be in yeshiva. And I understood from Shmuley's brother, who lives in Kfachabad, that um, from a young age, because of the Rebbe, he was in yeshivas and away from the home. For two years, Rabbi Hecht enticed me, coerced me, <laughs> pulled me into Friday night meals. I wasn't a willing guest. I wanted to be in the gym. He'd call up very sweetly and say to my dorms, he'd go, he'd call me by my Yiddish name, Fischl. My English name was Flip. <laughs> I don't think Flip um, flew from his lips very freely. I think Fischl was a little bit easier for Rabbi Hecht to say. Fischl, the Rabbitson made a fliggle for you. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm expecting every Friday for the first years of university uh, this phone call and like, I'm like ready to go to the gym, and it's like Rabbi Hat, Fischl, the rabbits have made a fliggle for you. We're expecting you. <laughs> you can't really, you know, what are you going to say? I don't want to insult the rabbits and, you know, the fliggle. Like, hey, okay, I'll come, I'll come. And two years I sat by the, fr the Friday night meal. I didn't know what they're talking about. I mean, I just don't know. It was just one of those things. I was, whatever. I wasn't a very willing guest, and I certainly didn't participate in the discussions because my head wasn't into it. And I wasn't into a lot of scholarly stuff. I was just an athlete. But it had its effect on me. And for those two years, I was weighing in my mind, kind of, the two lifestyles that were before me. When you're young and, you, and don't have much connection to Yiddishkeit, you do that. And on the one hand, I saw Rabbi Hecht as a figure, as a life, as a philosophy, as a, they had, they had substance. Whatever, whatever it was, I didn't know what it was, but I mean, they had books. It was, so I was thinking about that. 